Hello, I'm your host, Alex Freeberg, and this is The Alex the Analyst Show. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we have a really good topic, or at least I think so. We're gonna be looking at kind of some paths that you can take to become a data analyst, and those are self-learning, boot camp, and getting a degree. Now, when I say self-learning, I don't just mean that you don't have a degree at all. Maybe you are also transitioning from a different degree that is completely unrelated, similar to mine. Um, boot camp, which is either an online boot camp or you know um, an in-person boot camp, or getting a degree, and that's either a bachelor's or a master's, and I'll kind of talk about that once we get there. Uh, I want to say up front before I start this, uh, all of my kids are asleep, and so I have my monitor right here, and I may have to run. They have been kind of restless uh, tonight for whatever reason, so just wanted to throw that out there before we get started. Uh, let's take a look real quick at the really high level pros and cons of each one, right? So for the self-learning one, it the, the really good thing about it is that it's cheap. It's super cheap. You can do it basically for uh, free, if not very minimal cost, like under $200, which is insane if you consider how much money you could be earning as a data analyst. So if you spend $200 uh, to learn all the skills to become a data analyst and you land like a, even a $50,000 job. That is an insane uh, uh, return on your investment. Like absolutely insane. The difficult thing about it is sometimes it can take a long time, especially if you're not somebody who is very good at um, progressing and making sure that you're learning the correct things. Uh, I think another thing that's difficult about it is you sometimes you just don't know what you're supposed to know. Like you don't know what to learn. You're learning kind of random bits and pieces of different uh, programs or softwares or you know coding uh, uh, program. I said that already. Uh, programming languages is what I was trying to say. You know you're 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 kind of scattered and you're and you're not really focused on what you should be learning, and that's a really difficult thing and a difficult. Um, thing to overcome to really get a good grip on the skills that you need and get a job. The other hard thing is it's hard to get noticed by jobs if you don't have any experience and you don't have a degree that's related to it, right? So in in essence, the best thing about self-learning is just that it's cheap. Uh, that is the best thing about it. I, I can attest to this. It is cheap. Um, it just takes, it takes a while. It takes some dedication. It takes, you know, a lot of investment in time, okay? So for the boot camp, two things that are, are, I guess one thing that's really good about it is that it's extremely fast, or, or at least the path can be a lot faster than self-learning, and it can be a lot faster than getting a degree. So it's probably the fastest path to becoming a data analyst. Um, another thing that could be a positive is some have job placement uh, programs basically built into their, uh, you know, their program, and so if you're doing something like an in-person one where you know it costs like ten or $15,000, but they offer a job placement or you get your money back, that could be a really good deal. So that could be a positive. The downside to most of that is that typically they do not, right? And they're expensive. So the cheaper ones are about three to 5,000. Those are the ones that you're gonna get online like Springboard or Thinkful. Those are ones that a lot of people take, but you know, they don't offer job placement. They offer job like help, where they help you search for a job. But I don't believe they uh, offer job guarantees, basically. The other thing is, you know, it doesn't necessarily open up a ton of jobs, right? If you have a boot camp on your resume, and that's really only the only experience you have, like I'm, I'm imagining each of these scenarios, you're starting out with nothing. You either go the self-learning route, the boot camp route, or the degree route. You have no experience. Everybody's starting at the same level. A boot camp, uh, it might open up some jobs, but you know it depends on, I guess, the boot camp itself, all the skills that you learned, uh, the, ex the exact industry. <clears throat> So I don't know if it even opens up that many jobs, right? So then you have the degree. Uh, the thing about this one is it takes a very long time, four years for a bachelor's degree or you know, about two years for a master's. So you know if you're coming into it with a bachelor's degree and you know you really wanna change careers, like 100, 180 uh, your career, you get a job in let's say like data analytics or computer science or something like that. That takes two years. 
So compared to the self-learning route or the bootcamp route, this one by far takes the longest. Like ab just blows them out of the water. It's like three to four times as long. Uh, it's extremely expensive. Uh, some of these programs for master's degree run like an insane amount. It's like $30,000 a year. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's a huge investment in time and money, just huge. And so if you do it online, um, you know, that could make it a little cheaper. Or if you have your company partially pay for it or pay for the whole thing, that can make it a lot cheaper. Still a huge investment in time. But it is going to open up by far the most jobs. The other ones, you know, especially the self-learning is not going to probably open up any jobs in and of itself. You'll be able to put the skills on your resume. Um, the degree is going to open up by far the most jobs because you are getting an education. It's accredited. It shows employers that you took the time, which could be, uh, you know, years. And you took years out of your out of your time to basically learn these skills. Excuse me for a second. So. You know, you can get degrees in things like computer science, IT, information systems. Uh, those are just some of the ones that I wrote down. Um, you can also get things in like finance and you can get an MBA with a concentration in data analytics. There's lots and lots of options, honestly, for somebody who wants to be a data analyst, which is fantastic. So, you know, what do I think about these? Because I know a lot of people who have done all of these options. And I'm actually starting to meet a lot more people who have done boot camps, especially once I came out with that video uh, about why you should not take a boot camp. A lot of people have been messaging me, even people that I know, and they're like, hey, I took a boot camp. I was like, well, sorry, I feel I feel bad for saying that, but you know, thanks for letting me know. I was very polite about it. I was like, I was like, I mean, that's super cool. You obviously are successful, so it worked out for you. Uh, but it's not gonna be you know, perfect for everybody. So that was just my my opinion, but uh, you know, I kind of want to walk through my thoughts on each one real quick, which is the self-learning route, which is by far the cheapest. Um, you know, you can do it in your spare time at night after you get home from your regular job. And I think that for me, this was the perfect thing to do, right? I did not have a relevant degree. I did not have the money at, I didn't, I didn't even have anything remotely close to being able to afford to go back to college and get a master's in analytics. But the reason why I liked self-learning so much for myself was that I wasn't 100% sure if that's the route I wanted to go. And so I didn't want to invest a lot of time and money and, and everything to really see uh, if this was for me. Because if I made that huge investment and I didn't like it, well, then, you know, I'm kind of screwed right? I'm out, you know, let's say $10,000 just for either a boot camp or a degree or something like that. I'm just out a ton of money. Um, and, and to put it into perspective, like I spent $200, I would say I'm at max spent $200 on self-learning for like four months. Um, maybe, maybe a little more than that. I'd be shocked, but that's about how much I spent to be where I am now. Um, and I've taken more courses since then, uh, on things a little, a little more advanced things, but self-learning is, you know, a hundred times cheaper than anything, any of these other options, right? So that's kind of the benefit of self-learning is that you can do it in your own time. You can see if you like it, you can, you know, you, there's no huge obligation by any means, unless you're signing up for, you know, like a nano degree from Udacity, which, which some people do, and they cost like $3,000. They're expensive. Um, and, and I have a whole another, oh, I can make a whole nother video on what I think is worth it and not worth it. I don't think those nano degrees are worth it personally, but, uh, you know, the difficult thing about self-learning is you are not going to get noticed for jobs. Um, it, it's not going to help you get noticed for jobs. You have to take that upon yourself to do personal projects, create a portfolio, um, you know, call recruiters, make it known that you are a data analyst and you want to, you want to, uh, get a job as a data analyst, right? It's very much on you to present yourself as a data analyst. Um, so I think for the self-learning, the the people who fit in this category the absolute most are people that are trying to transition careers, but they aren't 100% if it's for them. And if you are really not sure, self-learning is going to basically give you the option of an out at any time. If at any time you find out that Python or SQL or or you know whatever skill right are 
I'm blanking on data analyst skills. This is um, slightly embarrassing. But you get my point. You can just bail, right? You can just stop and you don't have to take any more. Go on with your regular career and be happy, right? But if you take a if you take a boot camp and you invest like ten thousand dollars into that boot camp and then you figure out that you don't want to be a data analyst, you will not be very happy, right? So it's probably the least um, the least investment, both with money, time, and risk, because like, you're not risking a ton. So I think that is for for that kind of person. The boot camp uh, is going to be a very 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 small group of people. And I say that because I just don't like boot camps. And that's just my personal opinion. And I made this disclaimer that if it is for you, that's fantastic and that's amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm jealous because I wish boot camps were for me, honestly, because I think boot camps sound super cool. Like if I could go for six months and don't not work and just completely learn everything about data analysis, that sounds like the best time to me. I would, I would love that. Like right now, if I could do that and you know, I quit. I don't want to quit my job, but I keep getting my salary. But they send me to some boot camp to learn all these things. I would have an absolute blast. It'd be the best time of my life, to be honest. Um, but you know, I don't think that's for everyone, and here's why. I don't think that you are going to be as job ready as you think you are at the end of these boot camps, and that's what I've heard from a lot of people who have taken boot camps. That is not my own bias, right? Uh, I said that in the video and I, I made the disclaimer that, you know, I had not really talked to a lot of people. Well, I had talked to like a couple people, but I didn't have any personal experience with boot camps. But now that I have a ton of people reaching out to me, telling me their experience, I have a lot better understanding of what people got out of it. And to be honest, the biggest feedback that I was getting was after they got out, they did not feel job ready. Uh, they didn't learn all the skills as in depth. They didn't feel... Um, as prepared as they thought they should have been. So like take SQL, for example, which is a huge one that they teach at these courses. Um, you know, a lot of people were like, well, I know how to write queries. I don't know how to use it in a business setting. And so people who got jobs as data analysts after those boot camps were like, oh man, yeah, they did not prepare me. Like they did not prepare me as well as they should have prepared me. And so that's the, that's the feedback that I kept getting. Um, one second, let me check the time. Cool. So that's the feedback that I kept getting which was, you know, I learned a ton. It was awesome. I felt, you know, going out of it, I felt awesome. Once I got into my job, I realized how little I actually knew. And so I wish I had learned a ton more before actually getting into a job, which is interesting. Um, I think somebody, a lot of these people's expectation was really high, right? They thought they were going to learn basically everything they needed to know to be job ready. Whereas they give you, they give you the tools to be job ready, um, but you know, a job setting is very different and every job is different, right? And so if your expectation is to come out of a boot camp knowing just about everything you need to know, it's not gonna happen. I promise you it's not gonna happen. Uh, as for the, the cost, you know, I personally do not think that the cost is as, you know, let me, let me rephrase this. I don't think that you are getting your return on investment at a boot camp unless they are offering the job placement guarantee, right? So if you're spending $5,000 and you don't get a job, that's a huge investment. I just, I don't recommend it. Um, also, I've, you know, I've seen boot camps on resumes and I, t I, I personally don't particularly care that much. <laughs> and I, I feel bad saying that. Um, for all the people who are taking boot camps out there, it's just not something that I personally look on a resume and I'm like, man, this guy's job ready, right? I look at it as an accelerated self-learning slash mentorship where you learned a lot of the skills. And that's fantastic and that's amazing, but can you prove it, right? It's the same thing as self-learning, just in a quicker pace with, with a little mentorship. You have a little bit more guided um, courses. You have some projects that you're probably doing in the course. And so you have a little bit more experience, but honestly, everything that you're doing in a boot camp, you can do by yourself. Every single thing. There's nothing special about a boot camp that you can't do on your own. Um, I know I'm focusing on those two right now. I'll get to the degree in just a little bit. I just want to really, I don't know, not dissuade you, but make you not want to do a boot camp. <laughs> and I, that's just, that's 100% my personal opinion. 100%. Um, you know, 
I and, and I I never thought about it like this, and I'm thinking about it while I'm recording this, and so I'm not cutting it out. But I'm just gonna talk you through. It may be that I'm jealous, and hear me out. When I first started, I was poor, and I mean dirt poor. Like it was it was rough. Like when I was first in the self learning time, I was super super poor. Did ha- I had no money? Is there any other way I can say that? I'm I was broke. Um, and I, maybe I'm just a little bit jealous of people who do the boot camps because I wish I could have done that. I wish I had just like $6,000 sitting around ready to be used to make me become a data analyst faster. I, maybe I just wish I had that. And so I just kind of trash talk it because I want to make others people not take it. Um, it's very possible and, and I'm not going to get into my whole psychology, but it's very possible, but I just, I personally don't like it. Enough about boot camps, because good night, I just talked about that for way too long. Let's get into degrees, because I think that degrees are really interesting. I think that the timing of it, the degree that you get, the reason you get the degree are all really important. So for example, if you are right out of high school, you're going into college, and you're like, man, what well, I could take computer science and become a data analyst, do it 100%, you know, go for it. I think that if I could have done that, I would be, if I could have realized what I wanted to do when I grew up at a, at a younger age, I would be so, even further along in my career than I already am, right? It could have only done good things. So I really wish I would have done that. Um, and if you have the ability to do that and start early and start young, that is that is gold. If, however, you are somebody like me, um, or maybe not even someone like me, someone who's older, someone who's 25, 30 years old, already has a bachelor's, um, and you're wanting to transition, you're in a very tough spot, right? You've already gotten career experience. Whatever job that is, whether you're a nurse, whether you're a, a mechanic, whatever your job is, you already have five to 10 years of experience in that field. And so trying to restart your career as another career at that age, it can be difficult. I think that the younger you start, the younger that you get into, especially with a degree, to transition, the better. It's not impossible to do. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying that, you know, that's just something to be aware of, is that if you are 30, 35, 40 years old trying to restart your career and you're trying to get a degree to do that, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to really, really, really prove yourself. And so, uh, you know, think about that. Think about where you are, your career, your education, all those things. I will say, if, however, you, if, however, I'm sorry, my computer is doing something weird. If, however, you have a degree in something that's semi-related, and let me give you an example. Let's say you're a nurse and you have a nursing degree. And then you go back and get a master's in data analytics, analytics, computer science. Those two things go hand in hand. Same thing with finance, same thing with business. If you can combine two related degrees, uh, not skills, but degrees, that can be a beautiful pairing and something that can really make you stand out in the marketplace. Uh, And when I say marketplace, I mean in, in the competition for jobs right? Because somebody who has a degree in computer science and then a master's in computer science, we get it. You like computer science. But if you can marry those two together, like uh, finance or nursing or health, anything healthcare related, I'm healthcare, so I talk a lot about healthcare. You know, that is a beautiful thing. You have the knowledge. You have, um, you have not only knowledge in the domain, but in, in firsthand experience, like five or 10 years of being a nurse and then moving over to the data side of things is invaluable. Like that is absolutely something that people want. So, you know, think about that for your own industry. Uh, If you're in construction, finance, I I don't know, other industries I can't think of off the top of my head, obvious ones. Just think of your industry. If you can marry that with a data analytics degree, would that be helpful? then it can be a huge opportunity to switch careers, to become a data analyst, et cetera. Um, But it's gonna take a long time, right? You have to know that you want to do that. And so hopefully you got a little experience in your current job with on the data side of things and you know for certain that that's what you wanna do. 
Because if you aren't certain, if, uh, if you get there, you get the degree and you get out and you get a job and you hate it, oh man, and you just go back to whatever you did, you just wasted like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Um, you know, and as a nurse, you're probably already making a somewhat good salary. I know some nurses that make a good salary. And so, um, you know, if you just want a more, I guess, I don't want to say easier job, more relaxing job, a more office heavy job, then, you know, that could be a really good change, even if you didn't get necessarily the pay bump. Um, but there's lots of great degrees that you can get. Uh, one that I personally have been looking at is getting a master's in computer science or a master's in information systems or a master's in just data analytics, right? I think that for me, if I want to advance my career even further, I am going to need to get a master's degree. My experience is great. I'm going to need to get a master's degree. And so I think that a lot of people could also benefit from a master's degree in, in a field like that. Um, to kind of sum all of this up, I think that there are specific people for each group. There's almost none for the boot camp, but there's a lot for the self-learning, a lot for the degree. And I think that you just really need to look at yourself and think about which one is gonna work best um, for your lifestyle, where you are, do you have kids, uh, you know, do are you 10 years into your career and it's, you're gonna make a huge like 180 like I did? Uh, well, I wasn't far into my career. I was, you know, like a year into my career. Or not even a year, I was like six months and I was like, I'm out of here, I'm getting a different job. You know, you know who know where you're at, know which one you want to do. I highly recommend at least doing self-learning at the beginning, right? Doing self-learning for a couple months. If you really like it, try to get into a master's program. Even if you are in a master's program, do self-learning. Data analysts as a whole just need to be doing self-learning anyways, right? It comes with a territory. If you're in tech, you need to be keeping up with technologies, upping your skills, make yourself more marketable. Um, and then, you know, for the boot camp, if you got some extra money to throw around and you want to fast track your self learning, uh, you know, have a mentor, have a guide, by all means do that. That's, that's your decision. Again, I'm just jealous. <laughs> I'm just jealous. I'm sorry. I, I think I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to touch on this one more time. I feel like I really am just jealous and for all the people who have taken boot camps out there, I genuinely do want to apologize. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I care about you. I just, um, I know myself well. I know myself well enough to know when I'm jealous, and I'm willing to admit that. Uh, you know, and then there's the degree, people who have not only money, um, but people who have time, um, not a huge commitment. I will say for myself, I have three kids. I have a full-time job. I do the YouTubes. You know, I have, a lot of, I have a lot on my plate and I'm working from home, it's a pandemic. It's, it's just a lot going on, right? So, you know, for me, it's gonna be tough to go back and get my master's. I will do it almost 100%. My, my company offers, um, it's called a tuition reimbursement. So I pay up front and then after each semester, they pay me back for whatever I, for whatever I did up to a certain amount, but I will never reach that amount. So I could get a free education. I could, I just have to do it. I have to spend the time, um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big investment in time and money. So that is what I think. That is my take on this whole thing. I hope that that was helpful um, just to hear my thoughts on it. I don't think it was very helpful, to be honest. I think that this one was probably, um, my rambling about the boot camp really was a downer in this episode, if I'm being honest. So all, for all you people who took boot camps, who left 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I apologize. It's a huge downer, man. Just a bummer. Uh, we are entering a time in the episode where I take one comment off YouTube. I read it to you. I answer it. Um, it's semi-related to what we've been... Eh, not really. It's not really related. Uh, but Jazz, I'm going to say Sing... He asked, hi, Alex, what order do you recommend learning to learn these skills? Excel, SQL, Power BI slash Tableau Python for an accountant interested in data analyst career. Like I said, people from all walks of life want to become data analysts. It's the coolest job. Nobody wants to be an accountant anymore. The job is data, data analysis. Is there any other skill one should learn? Thanks. 
Um, I think that these core skills, which are absolutely the core skills, right? These are the things that you should start out, and any data analyst should start out with. And maybe toss R in there if you just you really want to. I, I don't want to get flagged for that. I prefer Python, R, whatever. The order that I would learn these in is SQL, number one, no doubt in my mind. I would then learn uh, Power BI and Tableau, right? And at the same time, slash Excel a little after because, you know, the marketability of knowing Power, Power BI and Tableau is much higher than learning Excel because they just expect you to know Excel. So I would learn Power BI or Tableau next. Then I would learn Excel. And then after that, I would learn Python, right? Python to me is probably the one skill that, uh, n let me rephrase that. SQL and Python are the two skills that I think have earned me the most money in my career. But I also know that Python is very difficult. It um, can be very challenging for a lot of people. And so, you know, I think learning Tableau first, learning Excel first, learning SQL very first is definitely the way to go. Um, all right. Uh, this is the end of the episode. Last, last episode that I did, uh, we talked about how I went on this huge rant, and then I asked you guys to type in jalapenos in the comments. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, for whatever reason, because you guys stuck around so long, you guys really enjoyed that. I think you took pride in being able to comment that below. So I wanna give you that opportunity again today. If you watched all the way to the end, today's vegetable, I'm keeping it um, vegetable-based this week, is gonna be avocado. So if you stuck around all the way to the very end again, type an avocado in the comments below. I will look at it and know that you are dedicated. You are, you have what it takes. Even more than last episode. Jalapeno people, very cool. It's, it's the avocado time. So thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. I hope that this was somewhat helpful, right? I hope the boot camp thing wasn't too much of a bummer. I, there's got to be at least one person who watched all the way through. That's my goal for today's episode. If I can get one person to watch all the way through, I'll be happy. Uh, one thing I completely forgot to mention, I have my dog sitting here right now. He reminded me. Max said to remind you that if you want to support the channel, go on over to Patreon. Uh, you know, I have, even if you just want to give five bucks, that would mean the world to me. I, I really do invest it back in, into these episodes. I'm going to be doing a big giveaway uh, at 10,000 subscribers. And so, you know, your, uh, your help with the channel, your support of the channel means everything to me. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good day. Shout out to all the avocado people. Goodbye.